Welcome back, everyone, to the last round of Lobster Rolls Season 2, Week 0, Lobster Labs. I'm Randy, your host, Dominic, or Shadow Free, whichever you prefer. And they're going to start out with Pudis and Morjor up against each other. And just try to figure out if we've done all the map picking related stuff. And it looks like we have. Okay, so we're on... Oh, we're on Cobalt Dream. Okay, cool. So we're on Cobalt Dream. That is where we begin. Not sure what was banned, because I missed it. Yeah, let's get to it as soon as the players actually start. Okay, are we doing... Are we starting? All right, let's begin. So, Buddhist and Morjor both have won every round so far. Just realized that the ratings have never actually shown up, but yes, Prudus and Prudus and Morjora are both three and O right now, and now they will no longer be. From here, we'll actually have a proper winner. Well, whoever wins this is going to have the top score of the tournament, and then whoever loses this is going to be probably second. I mean, there's there's four people with two one scores, so it's going to be a little let me a. About three with three one scores. Whatever. Anyway. I don't think there's any tiebreakers or anything happening. We're just going to have this stuff go as it does. So yeah, with that, more sure going throwers, as is Buddhist. No one wanted to go for Kodas. Well, more sure one stream last time. I mean... They were on stream, and they completely bodied their opponents. So, yeah, I think... Well, I can't completely body. It was actually... It was an even match, but still it worked. They did well last time. But I get it. Again, I understand stream nerves very well. But... I wouldn't worry about it. Pudis. Oh, they got that dart over in Mordor's factory. It's a bit of a pain, but... Ultimately not too big of a deal. Scorcher. However, in the center of the map, Pudis did win that engagement. So, Morjor, they're doing kind of, they're kind of having a bit of a hard time, struggling a bit to set up. Pudis is expanding a lot faster and being a bit more aggressive about that. Which is really working out well for Pudis. And there, we'll soon have a slowed down metal extractor. Its metal extraction does get shifted by the slowdown rate. It's always worth noting. Darts darts pinging metal extractors is worth a lot. Still, though, Moors should be able to get their economy back on track. Pudis not really defending anything. Their commander is up way up front. They have nothing in the back to actually defend against this. I mean, Scorchers from Morjor are not managing to get in. Pudis is able to micro around that and avoid getting... Any losses on their end, actually. Mortars managed to, care, managed to get rid of one dart. That's it. So unfortunately for Morjor... But maybe not. This Scorcher actually is managing to come around the back, and while there is full radar coverage, Pudis is well aware of this threat. Not a whole lot is back here to deal with it. And Morjor... Looking ready to deal with whatever comes through, though. They're going to have to be fighting against another Scorcher. Buddhist is well aware of Morjor's attempts to come in and actually, you know, harass them, raid them, go around the back. Take out all of their metal extractors, which would be really useful, actually. That, that'd be a great idea. But Morjor is trying to do the same thing. Sorry. Buddhist is trying to do the same thing. Morjor is looking to defend against it. And I think Morjor might lose a Mason pretty quickly. Ah, no. Mason got away. Good job, Mason. 
Lost two Scorchers in the process, but that's honestly worth it for defense. And unfortunately, Mordra Scorch was taken out as well, but... The important thing is the Mason survived. That's what counts. So the rebuilding can... or the building can happen, the reclaim can happen. It's actually... Pretty decent trade for Morda, for Morjor. The only downside is they are gradually losing position. And also could use some caretakers, but... Or just have the Mason come in here. That works too. But yeah, unfortunately they're having a really hard time actually defending against all these Scorches coming around. Honestly, not sure if they might want to just swap... Well, Rippers wouldn't really help. Not entirely sure what would, honestly. Lotuses are a nice touch. I just don't know if that's actually going to do the trick. Just because of the way the ranges work. Like, this this metal extractor is just out of range from the Lotus. Although, that being said, the Scorch are going for it. Still Scorches from Morajor, and he'll still be able to defend. So that is something, but honestly, as all this is happening, Morajor's losing more and more metal extractors, and Pudis is continuing to expand as they go. Sending out masons all around the map. Pudis on the other hand, like, Pudis has two masons, and Morajor, sorry, Morajor has two masons, three masons. Pudis has also three masons. But Pudis' masons are way farther up front, setting up the, setting up the typical fire base at the front. Morajor is also trying to do that, but they just don't really have the forces to support that. I mean, the Lotus is wise, but against six Scorchers, it's more like Lotus Commander is going to be something not worth attacking. It might be a problem. It's not a problem that Buddha's looks keen to actually try to solve, though. There's go around and instead take out that Mason, ultimately. Does go down, and that is, of course, the problem. I like nice touch though, Morjor reclaiming, I mean they're trying to rebuild from the looks of it, but still reclaiming what they could before the Mason died. Never a bad idea. I always encourage reclaim and I'm glad to see Morjor is doing that. Also switch over to, to Rippers. That's, that's if the one Ripper is never enough, it needs two. And the other Ripper's way out of position. Ah, I think that might be it. That might be it. Pudis I think is going to be able to take out everything that Morjor has. More just trying to go for a counterattack with the Scorchers, but they've lost so much of their economy now. Pudis is just screaming ahead. It's 30 to 14 right now. Morjor does have reclaim to at least stave off the worst of it, but they're not they haven't been able to get a single metal extractor themselves. This might turn though. These Scorchers are going in for some open metal extractors, and nothing, nothing is there to defend them. So a couple dead metal extractors. Possibly leading to at least one or two dead Scorchers because of the death explosions. Go up to them! Morjor, don't be scared of them. Just go up. All you're going to get is a suicide mission or... Uh, no, all you're going to get is a suicide mission. Just go for it. Take out the metal extractors. Do the damage. It's all you can do while rebuilding. And rebuild and reclaim. And you are doing that, so that's good. It's really good to see. But unfortunately, it's so far behind. Like Morjor... Still hasn't quite totally stabilized. I mean, they're starting to rebuild their economy. They're at least getting the reclaim to help out, but the, these rippers are completely out of position for the, for everything coming in here. The commander does have radar. They knew the radar was coming in. More sure, you know this is happening. You have to like this is the thing is when you're running riot against radar, radar is your friend. Like radar is absolutely necessary. You can't live without it. In this case, literally, your commander is going to die because of the lack of using radar. Because the riots were out of position completely. The Rippers cannot reactively move into position to to deal with raiders once the raiders are in sight. Like, you have to rely on radar in order to figure out where to put your riot units so you can stop their raiders from coming in. That is the only way they're going to do it. Otherwise, there just isn't enough time. And unfortunately, that means Mordor's commander is dead. Buddhist is ahead almost by a threefold lead metal-wise. These... Rippers might be able to, if they just relentlessly push, actually do enough damage to get Morjor to stabilize once again. But nothing is going for that. Also, a bit of a misclick there. Did you mean to build a caretaker there? That urchin? Understandable. That happens. By default, it's XC and CX, respectively. So, yeah, it ends up being a bit of a problem. 
Or CX is urchin, XC is caretaker. But yeah, that's a thing that happens sometimes. Still, Morjor, uh, unfortunately, just losing so much. I mean, they lost a lot of metal, they lost a lot of energy structures. They're just giving Pudis all this room to build up. I mean, at this point, it's too late. The Rippers really can't move in here meaningfully. I mean, the commander, actually, maybe. Maybe. But no, Pudis, or Morjor, rather, is too afraid to actually do the damage. Which, yeah, like, that's, they kind of are running out of timing. The factory should survive. But again, it's just... Uh, unfortunately, Mordor's hesitation has killed them. Like, that's that's all I can say. Mordor, the hesitation has been their defeat. They don't have the resources to rebuild. They've lost the fact. Wait, they lost the factory? Oh, it must have been from splash damage off the Ripper. Ugh. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry, Mordor. Like, you're just... You're being way too... You're... Being patient on a map where you have the if you have the disadvantage, you can't play safe and patient. You have to apply pressure. Otherwise, your opponent will just build it faster than you. I mean, you shouldn't be careless about it, but you do need to apply pressure. And also, make sure you have energy, because Morser has zero energy economy. I know it says... I know it says 12. That doesn't count. That's nowhere near enough to use all the metal coming in. And Mordor throws in the towel. Pudis takes it. Honestly, Mordor had some good chances to take it. It was just... They kind of hesitated when it came to the, some of the harassment. Got way too focused on keeping the units alive. Like, sometimes... Sometimes you just gotta dive and take as much as you can out. Like, suicide mission. Take out as much as you can of your opponent's base. And then behind that, expand and build up a larger army. And especially, especially when you take a lot of damage, like that kind of base damage or losing the commander. Especially, especially, like, losing the, the commander was lost, but a lot of units died in the process. So all our scorches are blown up by the commander death explosion. From there, from there, the rippers could have easily moved in and started taking out everything that had been built up. But again, that was also a question of radar not being used. Like the units were spotted, but nothing was, went over to actually deal with them. Because riding's too slow. Anyway, that that isn't it. I'm still going to do a few more matches. And I'm sure that's there's some additional matches being played. Let's see if Fruity and Baki Dante is going on. That should be good. Uh, oh, Bandit Planes! Hey, nice! All right, we'll get to be on Bandit Plains. And it's... Oh, close jump. Okay, cool. Bit of an advantage to the jump, I would say, early on, but... Looks like Fruity is doing a fine enough job defending against that. And maintaining... Okay, well, both players are relatively even at this point. Fruity, wow, they're expanding way far forward. Nice response on the pyros there, taking out most of them with very little cost. The western side of the map, eastern, west, or eastern side of the map, western side of the map, just trying to deal with Bakhtitan's commander, but it's working out. Conjure here with a bunch of glaives. A bunch of hidden glaives, so, you know, nice little bait there. And Fruity... Well, they are managing to Push forward quite nicely. Good use of Ronin there, taking the center of the map. The Livy, though, back to down his commander, approaching from the south side. Providing nice distraction, but it may not be enough. Reavers coming along the side, able to rip apart basically everything that's been built up, and that. Uh, that slings well, should be able to take out the stinger, opening things up for back to down his commander to be taken out. Reavers coming in, but the second stinger causing problems is still not going to be enough that back to down his commander. Retreating out of there. Pretty heavy, but in a terrible position to actually stay safe. The moment any phantoms get sight of it, it is dead. Same time over to the northeast. Juggernaut. 
unable to really find much value. And Fruity this entire time, able to, with Overdrive, just completely dominated Bhakti Danta in economy. While taking most of the center, Bhakti Danta can't, or can actually, why are they taking this out? Heck, the constructors could take this out. I don't know why nothing's actually dealing with this. That seems like a bug. Not sure what's going on there. Still, Bhakti Danta looking to protect their commander with a bunch of, with a bunch of pyros, which... It's risky and not proven to be particularly cost-effective. Reavers are doing an amazing job getting rid of them. That should clean up that attack nicely, opening Bhakti Danta up to... Or, rather, opening Fruity up to take out Bhakti Danta's commander at their leisure. Honestly, I don't even know if they want to right now. I think they're more concerned about taking out the Juggernaut. And then maybe from there... Taking out other things? Jeez, Juggernaut is pulling everything into itself. It's dealing more damage to itself from throwing units at it. It's smashing units into its own body than it is from actually getting hit. Still, Fruity has secured the southwest side of the map. Bhakti Dynas Commander remains a threat. But it's not going to remain a threat for long. Fruity well aware that the commander must be over there somewhere. Decides to go for it. Losses are not going to be a problem. The commander is going to be a bit of a threat, but honestly, against all these forces, the main issue is that there's a lot of forces not on the front line. Well, to be fair, though, Fruity does have a massive economic advantage. And I'd expect they have a fairly large army advantage as well. Especially as Bhakti Dante has invested most of their money into, or metal, into their commander and support forces for their commander, which is about to die. Bhakti Dante's commander goes down a huge loss of metal. Fruity actually, as a result, taking the attrition advantage. I mean, still the army value advantage, but good for them to take the attrition advantage on top of that as well. Oh, I wish this was just small. I mean, as it was, though, Fruity was already ahead army-wise, but it's the gap has increased even further. Especially, in, even just, not just army, in general. There's more metal on the field. Bhakti Danta losing a juggernaut. Second one heavily threatened. Banner should be able to take it out. I mean, 13,500 HP is not much when you're getting assaulted on all sides, especially by units that deal like a thousand damage a shot. 1,500 damage a shot, my bad. Oof, and that juggernaut pulled the right, pulled the reaver in range. Not necessarily, like, that kind of, that was doing the reaver a favor, honestly. Pretty badass reaver, though. At this point, Bhakti of Danta, they have nothing economically. They have got a lot of constructors. They've actually got a they have a mind-boggling amount of constructors. How do they have so many conv or how do they have so many constables and yet Oh, I see, most of them are ah, that makes sense. Rapid building in the northeast. Good thinking. It's a pretty safe place to expand, so yeah, it's the first place I would I'd recommend going, and they are definitely doing that. I mean, the center is wide open, but neither side has that. And Bhakti Tant still has the western side of the map. Fruity hasn't contested that, so it's still up. If Fruity does go for it, it, it goes down immediately, but... Right now, Bhakti Tant is actually not having to worry too much, because they're not having to deal with armies split across the map. They're dealing with a single army, and yeah, it's, it's great damage to themselves, but, you know, they're still able to at least deal with it. And the moderators coming in, that'll counter the Reavers pretty perfectly. The Slings will be able to help fight back, but it's not much. So this should turn things around. Bhakti Danta looking like they're going to be able to defend this no problem. Moderators are coming in. If the Faraday stays in while the moderators are in, that is going to be a dead army for Fruity. And there it is. Moderators are here. Oh! But there's the Phantom taking out the Faraday. That's opening things up. Moderators, ah, oh, no time to regroup. Bhakti Tanta throws in the towel, and that is that. I'm glad I managed to catch the tail end of that at least in the last few minutes. Cause that that was cool. I mean, I, I like Banded Plains. I think it's a cool map. I prefer Trojan Hills personally, but Banded Plains is also really just. It's a pretty map. It's got some cool dynamics as far as the terrain goes. Actually, I'd say it's the most interesting map terrain-wise, and it's. 
it is better for 2v2. Like I said, Trojan Hills is more than 1v1 variant. But either way, it is... It's a good map. I like seeing it. But I think that that is it. That is it. That was the last match for the tournament. We are done. All the results are in. All the scores have been tallied. And we are looking at Pudis taking first place with Morjor, Bakidanta, and Madcraft tying for second. Although Morjor arguably getting more second? It depends on how you deal with the points. But yeah. Still, that is solid. Good job, Pudis. Actually, good job, Pudis, Mortar, Baki, Dante, and Madcraft for doing so well. So, yeah. Well played to all of you. And... I think that's... Oops. Turn off the depression defeat music. All right. So, I believe that's it. And that is indeed it. Tournament's over. So yeah, congratulations to Pudis, Mordor, Bakitanta, and Madcraft. And thank you all of you for jumping in, participating in the tournament. That was really fun to watch. So I'm glad to see it. And we will be starting the regular Lobster Roll series, I believe, next week. Keep an eye on the forums for that. But I believe it will be next week that we get that ball rolling. So until then, again, thank you all for playing. And thank you all for watching. Have a good night, everyone.